And what's your home address? Where are you transmitting from? Uh, 14155 South Beaver Creek Road, number 201. The same as Ashley Pond. And what's your daughter's name? Miranda Gaddis, G-A-D-D-I-S. And no one's talked to her or seen us. Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis case. Welcome back, true crime enthusiasts. Today, we dive deep into the mysterious and chilling case of Miranda Gaddis and Ashley Pond, a story that continues to captivate the nation. Two best friends, two disappearances, and a community on edge. Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis, two young girls from the quiet town of Oregon City, were about to set out on a voyage that would permanently alter both their lives and the lives of the whole town. Ashley, a brilliant and passionate 12-year-old dancer, had a spark that made whatever space she entered shine. 13-year-old Miranda had a kind heart and a love for animals. Little did they know that their paths would soon converge in a sinister and unimaginable way. On the morning of January 9, 2002, Ashley ran towards the school bus stop, running behind schedule as usual. Living in the Newell Creek Village apartments with her mother, Lori Pond, Ashley's destination was merely 10 minutes away. But as the minutes ticked by, Ashley never arrived at Gardner Middle School. She disappeared, leaving her family, friends, and the community in shock and sadness. I know Ashley ran away, you know, and the fact that the FBI are throwing both of these cases, you know, into some Local law enforcement away. authorities and the FBI searched extensively in an effort to quickly uncover any evidence that would shed light on Ashley's disappearance. However, their efforts were in vain. The fact that Ashley's mother, friends, and investigators were sure that she hadn't run away added to the mystery surrounding her absence. On March 8, 2002, tragedy struck once again as Miranda Gaddis disappeared while making her way up the hill to the school bus stop. Interestingly, this bus stop was the very same one used by her friend Ashley because they were not only great friends, but also shared an apartment building. Michelle Duffy, Miranda's mother, had gone to work earlier that morning, unaware that Miranda wouldn't make it to school. However, as soon as Michelle discovered her daughter's absence, she immediately called the police, hoping for a prompt response. Regrettably, despite her quick action and hopeful expectations, She's been missing since this morning. She would never run away, though. Okay, you don't think she'd ever run away? No, I got something. Something a little bit different then. The detectives investigating the case once again faced difficulties and were unable to provide satisfactory answers. As we go forward with this case, kindly subscribe, like, and click the notification bell. A terrifying truth started to become clear as the days progressed into weeks, then into months. The thought that the girl's kidnapper may be someone they knew began to dominate the detective's thoughts. It seemed that the perpetrator had deliberately targeted girls who shared a striking resemblance, were of similar ages, and engaged in comparable activities. The hunt for this sinister individual intensified while the community anxiously awaited answers and justice. Then on that crucial day, August 13, 2002, a phone call shattered the silence as Ward Weaver, a neighbor of the victims, brought forth startling information. Weaver's son Francis dialed 911 to report his father's attempted rape of his 19-year-old girlfriend, but the shocking revelation didn't end there. The son disclosed that his father had confessed to the unspeakable crimes, the murders of Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis. This news sent shockwaves through the community. Ripping away father. any sense of safety. With this alarming revelation, the FBI swiftly obtained a search warrant for Weaver's home. The tension mounting as they meticulously calmed through every corner. Inside a grim storage shed, an unsettling discovery awaited concealed within a cardboard box containing human remains. The FBI identified the remains discovered as the body of Miranda Gaddis. The investigators continued to calm the area, and as the sun rose the next day, another haunting discovery emerged beneath a newly laid concrete slab. 
Ashley Pond's lifeless body was found, concealed by Weaver's desperate attempt to erase all memory. Weaver had been a primary suspect since the early stages of the investigation. However, the authorities faced the daunting task of eliminating other potential suspects. Almost 28 individuals living in the same apartment complex had to be carefully scrutinized. For months, concrete evidence eluded them, leaving the case shrouded in uncertainty. It took Weaver's violent assault on his son's girlfriend for the FBI to finally secure the warrant they needed to enter his property. Ward Weaver, a man with a dark and violent past, had a history of targeting women. Shockingly, Ashley Pond had previously reported him for attempted rape, but her complaint had been ignored by the authorities. On October 2, 2002, justice caught up with Weaver as he was indicted and charged with multiple counts of heinous crimes. Weaver later admitted to the deaths of Ashley Pond and Miranda Gaddis in an effort to avoid death sentence. Two life sentences with no chance of parole were given as punishment. Although the families received closure, the community's wounds will never fully heal. But the tale of darkness within the Weaver family didn't end there. On February 14, 2014, Weaver's son, Francis, was convicted of murdering a drug dealer in Camby, Oregon. He joined the legacy of evil within the family, becoming the third generation of Weavers to be convicted as murderers. Ward Pete Weaver, Jr., the father of Ward Weaver, had already been sent to California's death row for taking the lives of two individuals, eerily mirroring the burial beneath a concrete slab.